All right, so today we're going to talk about how we can use Vertica backup mechanism and restore mechanism to actually backup and restore a single object using uh, Vertica snapshot mechanism. <clears throat> so we're going to go and see first how does um, configuration file looks like. So I have a configuration file that was generated using VBR and I call it DBA fact that data underscore in e. and I'm gonna walk you guys through what does this configuration file contains so as you can see we got a name for it and uh, the destination of the bin restore points this is important because every time you run over that this will get overwritten the object name in our case is going to be this uh, fictitious table and what is going to be the restore mode this is very important create or replace when you restore it you will uh, you will overwrite the table then we got the location where the backup will be stored in each of the nodes in this configuration we have three nodes so let's go ahead and um, look at the executable because once you have the, the the configuration file, you need to first initiate the location. Uh, the option is uh, T and init, and you paste the con the control file or let's say the configuration file, and then you just run the backup with the option backup pointing to the same configuration file. As you can see here, it's pointing to the same configuration or backup configuration file. All right, so let's go ahead and see how we can create this file. Now that I showed you guys how it's supposed to look like, we're going to create one. So using the VBR command with the option help, you can see all the, all the options required to create run run the um, VBR executable so using the setup config we create a new configuration now you give it a name that's gonna be either is gonna be the name of the file that's gonna generate the destination of the binary which he already picks up the number of restore point in our case in this example we're just gonna do one um, we're gonna specify the object if we want it's not important like I mistype it here and the problem is you can't go back you can't delete uh, whatever you write there but we're gonna edit it in the in the file so what is gonna be the object restore mode so we're gonna choose create or replace this will mean that if the object already exists he will it will be replaced you wanna save the password or runtime yes database user save in config file so you can also save it as in config file I choose not to uh, now we're gonna choose the backup location backup host name for node 04 is gonna be on the same host so just copy and paste it um, then uh, backup directory on the node 4 we're gonna call it vertical backup test vbr for node 5 we're gonna use the same configuration so node 5 is gonna reside on node 5 on the same location node 6 the same now we don't want to go into advanced settings here um, we're going to specify the password file name so let's go ahead and specify if you don't want to you don't need to and we're going to call it testvbr.ni config file name we're going to keep it the same so we can see that we have a test vbi file so as you can see there I made a typo by putting the the object name wrong but there's no problem you can copy and um, you can 
edit this file after it's getting generated. So we're going to put the right name of the object. We're going to save it. And now, um, next thing what we're going to do, there's been a mistake that we've done when we've actually created a test VR. We told him that the password file holds the same name as our configuration file. So what we're going to do, we're going to edit it and we're going to give it a new password file name. So this password file will hold our password for the um, backup script to use when it's trying to run the backup. So we're going to go and point it to .vbr in the home directory of our db admin user. So we're going to call it .vbr.conf. So we're going to take that, we're going to then create the file, create the file, make sure that the file exists, and uh, Here, what you want to do, you want to specify the the password of your database. So, you want to put it in the same format as you see it here. DB password equals your password. All right. So next, what we're going to do, we're going to create a replica of the executable. So we're going to take the run DBA, which pretty much initiates, and then it runs the backup. So we're going to copy this file and create a copy of it and uh, create one for our test VBR. So we're going to call it run underscore test. VBR and we're going to edit it to point it to the right configuration file. So we're going to change the location of the configuration file to point to the latest one that we've just created called test VBR. All right, save and exit. So as you can see here, we have the files. Now we're gonna make it to be an executable by using the chmod command. Alright, so you can see these are two files. So one, it's run test is executable, and the other one is the configuration file that tells Vertica what to backup and where to place the backup. Now let's go ahead and run the backup to see what happens. We're gonna look once again into it. We're gonna copy the first line and we're gonna run it. And we get an error. The reason is that when we created a configuration file password, we had it um, with too much rights on it. So we're gonna change. We're gonna change it to have access only from the owner of the file. Read access only. In this case, the command is ch mode six hundred, and now we run again and we get another error which tells us it's invalid we just i just paused and so we see it run just pause and edit that file because the password was wrong it was actually super hard password <laughs> i had to edit it and put the real password in all right so the message you should get is initializing backup location backup location initialized if we go into that location that we've created, you can see that he creates a backup manifest. Manifest. 
which actually points to um, the let's say the metadata of the backup we're about to take so you can see right now it's empty because it hasn't hold anything but the moment we are going to run the backup this particular backup manifest is going to get populated with a bunch of information so let's run the backup the thing of backup is as simple as copying and pasting the command that you see here so as you can see the objects he found the object and now we're running the backup and voila it was pretty fast obviously the object is not very big and it's copying it to localhost so if we go back and we look at the objects created in the backup directory you can see we have the backup manifest which is edited we got the objects and the snapshots and let's see the tree of this particular object so you see it gives it a name with a timestamp on and the node look and the no name and if we go to the ob if we see the backup manifest that we talked earlier we can see that what objects are and gives it an identifier where the snapshot is uh, the, the name of the config file and uh, all right so let's go ahead now and um, list the backups that we just created so the option is list backup with the C all right so there's a small type of there it's actually backup is not backups and um, point to the configuration file that you use for the backup this will list you all the backups available so you can see we have two snapshots available for our backup in order for us to be able to use this snapshot we need to point to the archive or for example the first column that is called the backup so it's it's a combination of the configuration file backup and a timestamp so let's go ahead and log into the database and drop this table and let's see how we can restore it using that snapshot that we've just created all right so we go ahead and say drop table and that are fictitious data make sure that obviously the table is not going to be there all right great now let's jump back into the other window and run our restore command so restore command is pretty straightforward it's vbr and then t option which is which stands for task restore and then archive as you can see here archive and then you point to the timestamp registered in that archive so as it stays also on the help command equals and then point to the configuration file in order for him to know where to go and pick up the backup files to restore them all right so objects to restore as you can see he already found he already found the snapshot and now he's restoring so restore is pretty fast let's jump back in the database and run the same command so you can see he already found what he wanted to so let's clear this one out and um, let's do a count on the table obviously all the rules have been restored so we can see here we have what 1.7 million rows now let's get back to our restore backup location and we're going to release again the backup so we can see that we have both of them and let's see how we translate that particular date that we see in the definition of the backup list so if you take this one here and we use command the Linux command date with the option D at the time this will give us uh, this will return us a human readable date which stands for the time that the actual
backup was taken so you can see here and stays the same all right i hope you guys enjoy this one and i'll see you guys in the next tutorial